Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Uh, today we're going to go over a topic uh, which was which will allow you to examine, you know, self-examine. I like to go over classes which help you to examine the spirit that we deal with, some of the spirits we deal with. One of the spirits that dwells in a lot of us is that Judas Iscariot spirit, all right? What we're going to do is we're going to explore some of his characteristics, some of his traits. Um, Y'all got the title up? The title is called You Judases, all right? You Judases. So, Take this time when this class is coming out, uh, examine. Because just as he feel, we are prone to fall as well. But it's one thing I want to go over before we jump into class. Give me that video. I want you to give me that video. When I give you the cue, just play it. Um, because something recently happened where we got people that want to, I don't know, just quit. Like, we walk in this walk for however many years we walk it. But then people just... I throw in a tie, I quit. What spirit is that? Where does that spirit come from? Uh, let's play that video. There we go. Okay. A person willing to be... Pause it. Read. A person willing to be... Inter a person's me. willingness. A person's willingness to be... Inter, interly, in, entirely entirely consumed by grief will transform him, her into the individual that is the loneliest, most desperate, despised, most despised, excuse me, most despised and most unmemorable in the world's eyes. So what is that saying? I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it again. Let me read it. It says, a person's willingness to be entirely consumed by grief will transform him or herself into the individual that is the loneliest, most despised, and most unmemorable in the world's eyes. So what is that saying? Y'all could take that off the screen. What is that saying? I ain't really want too much from that. I was going through this video, and that stuck out to me the most. So I wanted to touch on that. It says that this person is 100% responsible. Give me Sirach 30 and 21. This person is 100% responsible for the way that they are perceived, right? You have a role to play in how you are seen in this truth. Read 30 and 21. This is the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 30 and verse 21. And if you can, IT, I want to see that on my screen so I can refer back to it. Verse 21. Uh-huh. Give not over thy mind to heaviness, and afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. Right, right. Read it again. Give not over thy give not over thy mind to heaviness. And afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. That's you. In your own thoughts. That's you transforming yourself based off of the things that you perceive, the things that you think. Maybe you think because you don't have the love that you think that you're due, that this walk is not worth it. Or maybe you think that because you've been in the truth for umpteen years and you're still single, you think nothing's ever going to change. Well, maybe... You're still single because there's some things you need to work out within yourself, within your spirit. And the Lord knows that right now is not the time for you to be putting the spirit that you have and mingling it with somebody else's spirit. 
right? You will transform yourself into the individual that is the loneliest. How? Because you are in your own thoughts, afflicting yourself in your own counsel. You're telling yourself the things that are right and the things that are good based off of what? What is your measuring stick? Is your measuring stick? Is this your measuring stick? Or is your measuring stick the thing that your auntie telling you that's not in its truth? Girl, you 50. Girl, you 40. Girl, you 35 and you ain't had a baby yet. You've been, you've been reading that Bible for so long and you ain't found nobody yet. Girl, you know your eggs is cooking. Come on now. Who are you measuring yourself against? Are you, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you really ready? And if you think you're ready, who are you counseling with so that you're out of your head and not thinking that you're the best thing on the market and you don't know why you're not taking yet? Who is your counselor? Who are you counseling with? Read it again. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Now, that's giving your mind over to heaviness when you've already decided, you know what? The only way I could feel good about my situation is to continue withdrawing, continue being by myself. Because obviously, the people that I'm being around in this truth isn't helping me. So, you're transforming yourself into the individual that is the loneliest. You never, you never hear the Sabbath. You never hear for the new moon. Every time it's time for you to be here, you find an excuse not to be here, right? Most despised, most unmemorable in the world's eyes. So when it comes to this truth, the most unmemorable portion would be, what's your works in the body? Oh, she in that department, he in that department? What do they do in that department? They do nothing. We don't understand your works. We don't know your works. We don't know what your value is. Because you've withdrawn yourself so much because of the affliction that you're allowing yourself to cause yourself according to your mind. You've took yourself out the game. Right? You're afflicting yourself in your own thoughts. Uh, continue to read. And afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. Uh-huh. Verse 22. The, gladden the gladness of the heart is the life of man. What's the life of man? The gladness of the heart is the life of man. The gladness of the heart is the life of man. So you got to learn to control your mind, control your thoughts, right? Because if you allow yourself to pull yourself away or if you allow your mind to pull yourself away from this truth, guess what you're going to become? You're going to become bitter. And that bitterness, there's no happiness in bitterness. So you allow yourself to become bitter, guess what's going to happen? Read that again. The gladness of the heart is the life of man. You're going to die. You're going to pull yourself out of this truth because there's no, there's no joy in celebrating the Sabbath. There's no joy in rocking your fringes. You get your joy from wearing pants and the attention that you get from wearing pants. That's your joy. That's what the dead, that's what they, that's what they uplift and uphold. You're going to die. Read that again. The gladness of the heart is the life of man. Uh-huh. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. And your joyfulness, meaning the love that you have for this truth, that's going to make you live longer. That's going to allow you to see the kingdom of heaven. Right? We might not see it in our lifetime, but we, we putting all our eggs in this basket that someday it will come forth. Right? That's my gladness. I get gladness from knowing I'm setting my kids up right. Same for you. Absolutely. That's the joy that we get. We get joy from knowing that we're doing the right thing. And the right thing is keeping these commandments, right? Not afflicting ourselves in our own thoughts. Go to Malachi 3 and 1. Let's read Malachi real quick. You got something? Yes, sir. Um, let me get uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 5. We're going to read verses 5 and 6. Because up there it said, a person's willingness to be entirely consumed by mm. grief mm. will transform him or her into the individual that is the loneliest and most despised and most unmemorable in the world's eyes. A lot of times, the reason why we fall into a state like that is because we tend to point the finger a lot and we don't examine ourselves. Let me show you something what God says. 
because we put ourselves in these type of situations instead of holding ourselves accountable and fixing what's inside us. We try to discharge everything that's going wrong as it's somebody else, as some type of external outsource or resource that's happening to us. But let me show you something. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. The book Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 5. Come on. Whoso keepeth the commandments shall feel no evil. So the Bible no says, whoso keepeth the commandments shall feel no evil mm -hmm. thing. Read. And a wise man's heart discerneth both times and judge. So the scripture says a wise man's heart, the heart is your mind, will discern both time and judgment. Meaning what? He knows how to make sound decisions when uh, an event or an opportunity presents itself. Read verse 6. Verse 6. Because to every purpose there is a time. And judgment. So to every purpose or to every decision, there is a time and judgment. Come on. And judgment. Therefore, the mystery. The misery. The misery of man is great upon him. Meaning what? We cause our own troubles due to our decisions. And it's up yeah. to us to be wise to make, to be able to discern time and judgment. Because like Ecclesiastes 3 says, there's a time for everything. Sometimes we make bad decisions or long-term decisions over temporary things, and it's not the right time. So then we cause these afflictions or are putting ourselves in these positions, and that will allow us, in our results, we become in grief, consumed in grief, or a root of bitterness will come up, and then we become lonely, and then inevitably, we become the most immemorable person to the world's eyes because of our poor decision making and poor being poor ability to be able to discern both time and judgment. That's all. All praises. Poor decisions, meaning control your thoughts. Don't afflict yourself in your own thoughts. You afflicting yourself in your own thoughts is you making poor decisions. Give me that in Malachi 3. Malachi 3 and 1. Because a lot of us, um, we came into this truth excited, right? I found out I was an Israelite. And then when I came in here, I found out other brothers and sisters walking this walk. You know what I mean? I'm not the only one who believe in the things that I've read or the things that were taught to me. And we trying. We, we putting forth that effort. But read it. Listen, let me, let, me, let me know if this is you. Let me know if this resonates with you. Read. This is the book of Malachi. Chapter 3 and verse 1. Read. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. Uh-huh. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. So this is talking about the spirit of Elijah coming back to the earth to prepare the way for the Lord. Right? Elijah's going to come, prepare the way. The Lord's going to come immediately thereafter. Read. Even the messenger of the covenant. The messenger of the covenant. That's Christ. That's the Lord. Read. Read. Whom ye delight in. We don't be delight in the Lord. I delight in the Lord. We all delighted in the Lord. Read. Behold, he shall come, said the Lord of hosts. He shall come. He came and he showed us what we must do. He showed us that we are Israel. We are from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Benjamin, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Naphtali. All these different tribes we come from. The Lord showed us that. And that thing was delightful. We understood that. The God that created everything in this earth that everybody so erroneously worship or not so quite worship the way he's supposed to be worshiped. That God that created everything, the God of from Genesis to Revelations, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God is our God and our God only. And he's not the God of so-called white folks or Chinese folks. That's our God. That's joy that we felt when we figured that thing out. Right? We delighted in that. Read that again. Read that part again. Ye, ye a covenant whom ye delight in. Whom did we delight in, right? Behold, he shall come, said the Lord of hosts. He's going to come. But what's going to be the state of those that were delighted in knowing that they were Israel? That immediately put their fringes on. That put their dresses on. That came out of them pants. That put the blunts down. What's going to be the state of them who were excited to learn that they were Israel and that God was our God, what's going to be that estate when he comes back? 
Read. Verse 2. But who may abide the day of his coming? Who's going to abide? Where's going to be all those excited men and women and children who learned that they were Israel? Where are they going to be? Read. And who shall stand when he appear? And who's going to stand? You brothers who was excited, you sisters that were excited, where are you going to be? He's going to come back. What is going to be your state of mind? Are you going to still be in that quitter spirit? Are you still going to be in that spirit of denial saying ain't nothing wrong with me? I'm good. It's you. What are, how are you going to, are you going to stand? Think about it. The Lord's coming back for those who were excited for him. Read. For he is like a refined fire. A refiner's fire. Read. And like full of soap. Like fuller soap. So a refiner's fire is that fire that metals, precious metals get put through to take out the impurities. Fuller, a fuller is like your, your cleaner, right? So a fuller's job is to get garments clean. So a fuller soap would get out the impurities that's in that garment. So you're going to be refined. You're going to be cleansed. That you who was happy to serve the Lord. So that means there's something there that's not really real. If you was excited to serve the Lord and you started serving him, there's still impurities that have to be taken out of us. Where will you be? Will you be in that spirit of quitting? Right? Was that it? That was it on that verse. Uh, keep reading. Uh, verse 3. And he shall set as a refine, a refiner, and purified of silver. Uh -huh. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, uh -huh. and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering and righteousness. An offering and righteousness. So that's why the Lord will come back. That's why the Lord has come back and given us this spirit to, for us to know how to give him the perfect offering. Levi wasn't offering up that perfect offering. They was taking that sacrificial law and allowing the nation to just go crazy and then just cut a cow up and say, all right, I'm forgiven. No, now we are refined, right? And this refining process means that when we do wrong, we got to fess up to it. We got to own up to it. We got to see where our flaws and our faults are. And we got to say, you know what? I got to do better. There's no quitting. A lot of times, brothers and sisters want to quit. They want to seek out different ways of coping. And those methods of coping usually involve sin. We can't do that no more. That's destructive behavior. That's bad decision making. That's you afflicting yourself in your own counsel. Remember, give me Jeremiah 32 or 23 and 29. This walk isn't easy. It's sweet at first. But then when you start figuring out that it's things that you have to change about yourself, a lot of people like to back off and say, you know what, that's not what I signed up for. It sounded good in the beginning, but now that I got to change and, 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 and refrain from doing the things that bring me joy, I don't like this no more. I don't like it. I want to put my pants on as a woman. Read 23 and 29. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and verse 29. Read. Is not my word like as fire? We, Sit. we, we just read that in Malachi. That the refiner's fire will purify us. Read it again. And it is not my words like as fire. The word of God is like fire. Read. Said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So you want to be stubborn? You want to stick to your ways? Guess what? The Lord said this word will break you. The word of God will break you. You think... Uh, PC or what they, what, what they call it when you go to the military, physical training, you think that's hard? You think they break you there? No, the Lord word would break you. These are just words, but it's more than words. There's a power in here. These words will burn you up. It will burn your faults up. It will burn you or break you. And that's what we signed up for. We signed up to be burnt and broken because the way of the nigger, the way we were, that's not the way to be. You got to, the sooner you realize that we are no good, the sooner you realize that our way led to destruction, the better off you will be. The sooner you realize you're more Judas, I'm more Judas, we are more Judas than we think we are, the sooner we realize that, the better off we'll be at 
recognizing when Satan's attacking. Because Satan will attack you when you don't understand and don't realize that your defenses are down. Right? Read that again. Well, not, it's not my word like as fire, uh -huh. said the Lord. Because that word, that word of God burns you up. Right? Read. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Uh -huh. Verse 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, said the Lord, that still at my word, every one from his neighbor. That's it. That's it. Give me, um, give me Sirach. Sirach 30. Sirach 30. 30 and 14. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 30, and verse 40, 14. Better is the poor, being sound and strong of con constitution, than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Read it again. Better is the poor, being sound and strong in constitution, than the rich man that is afflicted in his body. So what is that going into? Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution. I want Matthew 5 and 3 first. Matthew 5 and 3. Hold this in Sirach because we're coming back. Yes, sir. What is that poor going into? We're going to first dive into the poor. Who is the poor? What is the poor? What is that referring to? Matthew 5 and 3. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Who are the poor in spirit? We are the Amen. poor in spirit. Why? What is the spirit of God? What is the spirit of God? Who knows what the spirit of God is? These commandments, keeping these commandments, right? Right. That's the exactly. spirit of God. Listen, we are the poor in spirit or the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the poor in spirit because... They don't have treasures built up. What are those treasures? Those treasures are the keeping of the commandments. We poor in spirit because we have a negative or we are in default when it comes to having riches stored up spiritually. All right? What we're trying to work on is building up our spiritual treasures or our heavenly treasures. That's going to allow us to be rich in spirit. But we are the poor in spirit because we don't know who our God is. We don't know who we are as a nation. So we are the poor in spirit. So when you read in Sirach 30 and 14, when it says better is the poor, meaning better is us, being sound of strong constitution, having a strong mind, right, than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Meaning, the men who have whatever they want at their disposal, right? Us, those of us who are trying to keep these commandments, those of us who are coming into this truth, right? We're better than those men. Read that in Sirach. Sirach. Chapter 30 and verse 14. Yes, sir. Bet. Better is the poor being sound, being sound and strong in constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Uh-huh. Give me uh, Isaiah 14 and 32. Isaiah 14 and 32. One more precept for the poor. Who is the poor? Maybe the last one wasn't clear enough. 14 and 32. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, and verse 32. Uh -huh. What shall one then answer the messenger of the nation? The Lord has founded Zion. The poor of his peoples shall trust in it. Who? The poor of his people shall trust in it. Give me 10 and 2. So the poor of his people. So the poor is actually talking about a particular people. The poor of the people from Zion. Give me Isaiah 10 and 2. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 2. Uh-huh. To turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the righteous from the poor. 
So um, we start from one. Read one and read two. One and two together. Verse one. Woe unto them that decree unrighteousness, decree, uh-huh. and that right grievousness with their with with they have. Wait, excuse me. Read that again. Uh huh. Woe unto them that decree unrighteousness, decree, and that right grievousness which they have prescribed uh-huh. to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the righteous from the poor of my people. The poor of my people. This is the Lord saying, woe to those who devise iniquity or those, woe to those who write laws or woe to those who are in charge. And they, they refuse to allow his people to get the judgment that they're due. Woe unto them. His people are the poor, are the needy. Right? So when we say poor in uh, Sirach chapter 30 and 14, we're talking about the children of Israel. Uh, is that it? Are you finished with that? No, you still got a little bit. The okay, poor go ahead. of my people, that widows may be their prey. That widows yeah. may be their prey. They prey on our single mothers. They prey on the, the mothers who uh, fathers are not in the houses. They prey on them, right? Woe unto them who prey on them, read. That they may rob the fatherless. That they may rob the fatherless. We are fatherless as a nation because as a, as a whole, our people that sleep don't know their God. So they're without a father, right? So we're pray. Go back to Sirach. Let's continue my thought. Just wanted to touch on who the poor is. Read. Remember, the Lord said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Right? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 30 and 14. 30 and 14. Uh-huh. That's what we read. The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and 14. Uh-huh. Better is the poor, being sound and strong in constitution, than the rich man that is afflicted in his body. Right, so our constitution is our mind, right? The things we think, our discipline. So long as we got our mind about us and we have the mind to serve the Lord, regardless of our estate, we're better than that rich man with everything. Read. Verse 15. Uh-huh. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. Right. And a strong body above infinite wealth. Read. Verse 16, there is no riches above sound body uh-huh. and no joy above the joy of the health, the heart. Read. Death is better than a bitter life of continuous sickness. Uh-huh. You hear that? Death is better than a bitter life of continual sickness. What's that going into? Make a choice. Either... Keep these commandments or get outside the doors. Be amongst the living or be outside the doors. The Lord said, what's that in Revelations? I'd rather that he, uh, instead of being lukewarm. Hold this real quick because the Lord wants you to make a choice, right? And that's the, that's the point I'm trying to tie in. I'm trying to tie in for you quitters. Right? Make a choice for you people who, Revelation who, who, who's falling in and out of the spirit. Make a choice. A lot of times you're falling in and out of the spirit because you lukewarm. You're trying to play both sides. Pick one side and go 100% at it. And if you fall, walk in this walk, then you're going to stand back up. But if you're on the fence and you fall, you're going to be like, man, that's all I needed to do anyway just to get myself out of this truth. I ain't perfect. Nobody can be perfect. I'm just going to quit. No, make the choice to either be in this truth or not. Read. Three and what? This the book Three of Revelation. This the book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 15. Read. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Uh-huh. I would thou, I would thou with, could, I would thou cold or hot. I wish you was on fire for this truth. I wish you was on fire, or I wish that you just fall off. I wish you make a decision. I wish you make your mind up. 
Read. So then, because thou art lukewarm, uh huh, neither cold nor hot, yeah, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because you playing both sides, the Lord said, I am going to spew you out of my mouth. Go back to Sirach 30. Sirach 30, I'm, I think we were at 18 or 17. Verse, this is Sirach chapter 30 and verse 18. 17. 17. Death is better than a bitter life. So uh, death is better. Death, being in the congregation of the dead, we see that in... Um, Proverbs twenty one sixteen or yeah, Proverbs twenty one sixteen. You ain't got to get it. That's the congregation of the dead. Those people who choose to not keep the commandments. The Lord said that's better than you being in this truth, being wishy washy. That's better than you being in this truth and being bitter. Why would a person in this truth be bitter? A person in this truth would be bitter because they can't fulfill their lust because they're walking the fence. They ain't, made a, they ain't made a choice. They ain't made a decision yet. They still single. They finances suck. They constantly getting hit in the head with, with, with bills or whatever. Whatever whatever's happening to make a person go through that fire, they're kind of refusing it. Before this truth, I ain't experienced none of this. But now that I'm in this truth, I'm getting burnt. I'm getting refined. I don't like the way it feels. That'll make a person bitter. And especially because they can't express themselves how they used to. Whoa, whoa to you. Uh, read. Read that again, 17. Death, death is better than a bitter life. So death is better than a bitter life. Go on ahead, just walk out the door instead of being here, wasting everybody's time, being bitter, right? Putting that same spirit upon the next sister or the next brother. Read. Or continuous sickness. Or continual sickness, because where does sickness come from? Right? The scriptures say, woe unto him. Where's that in? Sirach 30. Yeah. 38 and. Give me that Sirach 38 and 9. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 38, and verse 9. My son, in thy sickness be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. Leave off from sin, and order thy hand aright, and clean thy heart from all wickedness. Then give place to the physician, for the Lord has created him. You hear Let, verse 11. Verse 11? I, oh, excuse me. I'll start at verse 9 one more time. Verse 9. My son, in thy sickness be not negligent. So in your sickness, the scripture says not to be negligent. Negligent in what? Come on. But pray unto the Lord. And he will make thee whole. So we're not supposed to be negligent in our prayers so that he will make us whole. But watch this. Verse 10 is very key because it tells us why the sickness comes on. Come on. Leave off from sin and order thy hand right. You see that? That's what causes our sicknesses. And it's also what causes us a lot of our bitterness, that root of bitterness to creep up in us that will also have us not a strong constitution of mind. Right. We'll be afflicted in our minds or right. troubled in our hearts because of what? Sin. Sin. That's why the scripture says to leave off from your sins. Come on. And cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. Or cleanse your mind from all wickedness. Because those are the, also the same things that afflict your mind and can cause sicknesses. But the scripture says it's better to die than to live a bitter life or continual life sickness. So again, it's choosing life or death. It's choosing the commandments or sin. It's your choice. Right, right. And 17 telling you, look, get it together. I want verse 15. That's the one I was looking for, but excellent point bringing out those two verses. 15 is what I want. It goes exactly into what the officer was going into. Read that. Verse 15. 
He that sinned before his maker, let him fall into the hands of the physician. So that sickness is going to come because thou art a sinner, right? We understand even as us keeping the commandments, we're not perfect and we're going to have falls. But a sinner, like that's your occupation. Your occupation is to just sin. We repentant Israelites, we happen to sometimes sin. We are not sinners by occupation. We're not sinners by the fact that this is something that we love doing. No, a lot of you love to sin. So the Lord said you're going to fall into the hand of the physician, meaning you're going to be sick. Right? So a life, uh, just give me uh, verse 18. Go to Sarai 18, uh, 30 and 18. I'm sorry. So a life that you should choose is a life of keeping the commandments aside from death, which, um, which has bitterness. All right? Read. Give me that. Sarai 30 and 18. Sarai chapter 38 and verse 18. 30, 30 and verse 18. You said 30 and 18? Yeah, 30 and 18. We finishing on, we was at 17. Okay. So now we at 18. Verse 13. Delicate pull upon a mouth, shut it up, are as mess of me, messes of meat, messes of meat set upon a grave. So it says, delicates poured upon a mouth, shut up, are as messes of meat set upon the grave. So what that's going into is, think about it. Think about a mouth that's closed, and you're trying to give it delicates or delicacies or anything that you're supposed to put in this mouth. It says that's the same as a whole spread of meat, a whole spread of food set up at a grave site. Like the dead can't eat the meat that you set up. The same way those who are shut up can't receive that which is delicate. Give me Matthew 7 and 6. Continue to hold Sirach 30. But give me Matthew 7 and 6. Because for you to give delicates to one that is shut up, it serves no purposes like casting your pearls before swine. There's no benefit from it. Read Matthew 7 and 6. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh-huh. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Uh-huh. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Uh-huh. Lest they trample them under their foot, under their feet, and turn again and rent. So the effort that you gave to give a blessing or to give something that's precious to something or someone that's undeserving of it, it's going to serve no purpose, and in the end, it'll bite you, right? Give me Proverbs 24 and 7, because a dog and a swine, you're giving them pearls. You're giving them things that's precious. They don't know what to do with it. What, what a dog, what a, what a, what a swine going to do with a pearl? It's going to look it, look at it, probably stamp on it, it probably, you know, eat it, and then put it out the drought. And now it's no good. Right? You've wasted a blessing on something that has no ability to appreciate it or accept it. Give me Proverbs 24 and 7. This is what that's going into. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 7. Uh-huh. Wisdom is too high for a fool. That's it. Wisdom is too high for a fool. Meaning, this knowledge that the Lord has given us, if the Lord has shut you up, there's no need for you to even waste your time sitting here trying to get fed because it's just not going to work. You're wasting your time. Make a choice. Be here with us going 100%. And if the parables understanding escape you, raise your hand. Come to the leadership table. Hit us up in the DM. Get on the Biblical Scholar channel and ask us questions. Don't let these parables escape you. That's a commandment. If you don't understand something, you're just sitting here like, uh, oh, prayer to the most high. Uh, I want two breads. You're wasting your time. Right? It's a reason for that. It's a reason why a person would sit here, not understand something for so many years, and then just give up and quit. It's a reason for it. Uh, give me verse 19. Go back to Sirach. Book of Sirach, 
chapter 30 and verse 19. What good do it, what good do it the offering unto You know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We didn't finish uh, Proverbs. Let's finish Proverbs first. Yes, sir. Proverbs 24 and 7. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 7. Uh-huh. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He opened not his mouth in the grave, he, in the gate. He opened not his mouth in the gate, meaning he doesn't have the ability to teach. He cannot teach. He will not teach. Why won't he teach? Because when it was time for him to learn, he didn't open his mouth and accept what was there for the consuming so that you may grow thereby, right? Uh, go back to Sirach 30. So this person who is shut up, don't have the knowledge, don't have the wisdom, can't teach. This person hasn't used the knowledge that was given to him to control his impulses. You can't teach a person not having any experience. So this person, when you read in verse uh, 18 in Sirach 30, this person who is shut up, that's the same thing as a person who can't teach because they don't have the experience. You don't have the experience because you never took, like how can I say that um, averting my eyes work if every time I see something that I should avert my eyes from, I'm constantly looking. The scriptures say avert your eyes from a beautiful woman. The scriptures also say sit not down at all with another man's wife, right? If I never applied those, I can't say that they work. So if I'm constantly doing them things, looking and sitting down with other man's wife, I can't take this precious, delicate wisdom and teach nobody else. So that person's mouth is closed in the gate in uh, Proverbs 24 and 7. His mouth is closed in the gate. He can't teach you nothing. He don't have the experience. It was never poured in him. You sitting here, you wasting your time, make a choice. Make a decision. Don't be like your father Judas. Get out of that spirit. Go to Sirach 30. Let's finish that in verse uh, 18. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 18. Uh-huh. Delicate poured upon the mouth, shut, shut up, are as messes of meat set upon a grave. Uh-huh. Verse 19. What good doeth the offering unto an idol? Mm. For neither can it eat nor smell. So it so so is he that is persecuted of the Lord. So is he that is tried of the Lord, or so is he that is refined by the Lord, right? This person is similar to an idol. An idol can't do anything. An idol, it offers you up a suggestion of what things could potentially be. They offer you an image of how life could be. Life could be so grand, and you see it on the internet. You see it on Instagram. You see it with uh, celebrities, right? They offer you a suggestion of how life could be, but they can't do anything for you. Yet the life that they live is glamorous to you because that's what you perceive it to be. You don't understand what they go through behind the doors. But that's the same um, an idol can't do anything for you just like the man who is persecuted whose mouth is shut he can't do anything for you this man is of the Lord being tried he's put in that predicament he's put in that situation only the Lord could shut you up the Lord could shut you up the Lord could open you up that's being persecuted or what the scriptures say being refined you understand what I'm saying Give me Ecclesiasticus 4. Yeah, give me uh, Sirach 4. You got it? Sirach 4 and 17. Yeah. I got you. The book of Sirach, chapter 4 and verse 17. Read. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways. So at first she will walk with that man by crooked ways. The man is being persecuted. The man is being refined. He's going to walk. The spirit of wisdom is going to walk with you while you still being a nigga until you get your act together. Until you be like, oh man, I'm not supposed to be doing A, B, and C. The spirit going to walk with you in the beginning while you're doing wickedness. But then a certain point in time come where you got to stand up and be like, you know what? I can't keep blaspheming. I can't keep saying I'm an Israelite. I can't keep saying I'm God's chosen and I'm acting like the niggas. At some point, I got to stand up. 
At some point, I got to start relying on these crutches of I'm young or I don't know. So in the beginning, wisdom will walk by you in crooked ways, read. And bring fear and dread upon him. And bring fear and dread upon you, read. And torment him with her discipline. That's that fire. Remember, we're going to be baptized by fire. By water and fire. Or what would it, what it say? Fire and torment him with her discipline. Torment her with her discipline. We're going to be baptized with fire. Oh, fire and uh, the Holy Spirit. Fire and the Holy Spirit, right. The, that's, that's the fire, the torment. And when we go back to Sirach 30 and read down, we're going to see what that fire is. Go back to Sirach 30. Sirach 30 and 19. Because remember, the thought, the man's mouth is shut up. The Lord has shut a man up. This man can't receive meats. This man can't receive anything precious. This word of God is precious. A lot of men, a lot of sisters can't receive it because they are shut up. Right? Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 19. Read. What good doeth the offering unto an idol? Uh -huh. For neither can it eat nor smell. Uh -huh. So is he that is persecuted of the Lord. Read. He seeth with his eyes and groaneth, mm. as an eunuch that embraceth a virgin. That's and fire. Sieth. That's fire. That's being put through fire. You are a eunuch. You ain't got the tools that could be used to embrace a beautiful who? Read it again. He seeth with his eyes and groaneth. All he could do is look at it. It's no use. It's beautiful to him. He want to partake in it, but ain't nothing he can do because he's physically incapable. He's been shut up. He's unable to partake. Read. As a eunuch that embraceth a virgin and sighing. He's sighing. That's that fire like. <sighs> and that's how people feel that's in this truth who's been shut up from receiving his love and they walk in the walk and they just going through the motions and they know that they can't partake in the world. They just look at it like, hmm. I feel much better if I can get high. Hmm. I feel much better if I can get that attention I used to get when I wore pants. Hmm. You're shut up. You're being persecuted for a reason. It's things that you got to get out of your system. And the only way you're going to get that out your system to be a worthy vessel for the Lord to inhabit and use and rest in, you got to go through this. Right. You can't just go, come in here, put your fringes on, wear a dress, uh, come here for the Sabbath, come here once or twice for a new moon there now and again and say, I've done it, I've arrived. No, you ain't done nothing. Because the Lord said, he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Meaning, you got to go through a whole lot of fire. And then when you die, afterwards, when it's judgment time, you're going to be able to get your books read and say, yeah, you worthy. No time before that. It ain't going to be no fire that come to you and the Lord going to stop everything and say, all right, now nah, bring him out. No, you got to be saved after you go through everything. He that endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Not the same will be saved right before it get bad. No, you got to endure to the end. You about to say something? No. Uh, let's finish that in verse 20. Verse 20. He seeth with his eyes and groaneth, as in eunuch that embraceth a virgin and sighed. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Give me uh, Psalms 88 and 8. Psalms 88. Uh, Psalms 88 and 8. The point is in 8, but I want to just read from verse 1. Psalms 88 and 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 88 and verse 1. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps, thy wrath lieth hard upon me, 
and thou hast afflicted me with all thy ways. That's all the woes that we feel. We feel a lot of different woes. We understand that we ain't nobody in this earth. Us as repentant Israelites, we know we ain't nothing. So these prayers right here, these are good prayers to pray, to cry out to the Lord for mercy. But read eight, because eight is the point that we were touching on back in Sirach 30, read. Selah, thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Those who love me, the people who really care for me in the world, Lord, you put them away from me. As for these people that are sitting here, I don't, I don't really know how they feel about me. This is that person, this is that Judas who refuses to come into this truth and fully embrace what's here. Right? So, read. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. They talk about me. They are slaves. They, they talk about the sisters like they pick me or they Harriet Tubman's or they slaves. You know what I'm saying? The way, the way they dress, they dress not fly. I had a sister come through here and say, I, I would love to repent, but I got to be fly. I say, what that mean? I can't dress like these sisters dress in here. I say, these sisters in here dress with dresses on. That's what I mean. I ain't seen her no more. Uh, keep reading. I am shut up and I cannot come forth. I am what? Shut up and I cannot come forth. I am shut up. I cannot come forth. The things that I want to do, I can't do it. I am prevented from it. I am shut up. This is safety. Us in here, we shut up for safety. But some people shut up for destruction, so they're not able to receive this word. Read. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Uh -huh. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Say la. So this person losing a little bit of faith. This person is losing his mind. Saying, damn, what I got to do in order for you to notice that I'm doing good? Do I got to die? Do I got to lay down in the grave and get back up and say, yeah, this is the way to go? That's exactly what you got to do. You got to, until the end of time, keep these commandments. Like our forefathers and foremothers in the book, what is it, Hebrews 11, they had faith, not seeing the promises, knowing that afar off this thing was going to happen. They said, look, we pilgrims in another land. We understand that this is not our home. This is not our rest. So whatever it takes for me to make sure the future is good for my, um, my posterity, my children, I'm going to do that. You got to be selfless to put away the things that you hold dear that makes you feel good and say, I got to provide a great place for my children. A lot of people ain't got their spirit. A lot of people want that, that me, 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 me. Let's go back to uh, Sirach 30. Sirach 30, uh, I think we had 21. The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 21. Uh-huh. Give not over thy mind to heaviness, and afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. Yeah. The gladness of the heart is the life of man, mm -hmm. and the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. Right. Love thine own soul, and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee, for sorrow hath killed many. And there is no profit therein. Make a choice. Make your mind up. Be for this truth and be happy or get the hell out and be happy in your sin. Get the hell out. Make a choice. The Lord wants you to not be lukewarm. He wants you to be 100% hot or 100% cold. Read. Envy. Excuse me. Uh, yes. For sorrow hath killed many and there is no profit therein. Envy and wrath shorten the life and carefulness bringeth age before the time. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. That's right. That's right. Um, I want to start on um, the point of the class. You mind if I bring out something? Uh, let me get 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. Uh, just to land back off what the officer was bringing out. So a lot of times, like he was saying, you got you to gotta make a choice, right? So it's sometimes we let allow the cares of this world or the things that we had before we found out that we was in the truth and we're not able to obtain wisdom, even though the Lord will give it to us in our crooked ways. But because you don't want to obtain wisdom or you don't want to strive for righteousness, then that wisdom will leave you. And I'm going to tell you what it is. This is what it is. Watch this. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. This is what a lot of us fall in, especially us young, like, 
teenagers or early 20s and all of that. Let me show you something. Read this. 2 Timothy 2 and 22. Oh. It's the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22. Come on. Flee also youthful lust. You see that? Flee also youthful lust. The things that we desire right now or the things that we think will become the truth we're missing out on, it's just youthful lust. What does that mean? It's not even going to last. Like 10, 12 years from now, you're not even going to care about that stuff. But what you're going to do is, since you don't want to flee it, you're going to allow yourself to fall in and make these terrible decisions, these lifelong lasting decisions, and you're going to ruin your life. And then by the time you've grown out of that lust, you're like, damn, man, I wish I ain't do that. If only I listened to my teachers. If only I listened to my instructors. If only I applied the Bible as I was instructed. If only y'all have took this more serious and fled youthful lust. That's why when you when you get older, or even when you're young and you hear uh, older brothers be like, man, if I could go back, man, hey, I'd have stayed in school. I'd have done better with this. Or I'd have never messed with this chick right here. Man, if I could do it all over again, I would. Because those things or the decisions that they were making, they were in their youth. It was youthful lust. They know under, when they get older and you mature, man, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't even where I shouldn't even did that. Why did I go inside that store and do that? Why did I rob such and such? Or why did I lay with such and such? You know what I'm saying? Folks be having kids at 15, 16, 17 years old, have no life experience at, at, at all, right? But because of youthful lust, you fall into destruction and, de and you destroy your own soul. Finish that up. Youthful lust. Read it again. Flee also youthful lust. Come on. But follow righteousness, uh -huh. faith, charity, peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Meaning out of a sincere heart. Flee your youthful lust and that temporary gain, that sin or pleasure for a season, and follow them after righteousness. The instructors, follow this after righteousness because this is what uh, you're going to be judged by in that last day. Okay, if, if you don't mind, if I get well, one more script, uh, Ecclesiastes, I believe it's chapter 9, verse 11, one of my favorite scriptures. This is something I had to meditate when I was younger, bro. For real, I had to meditate on this when I was younger. Uh, Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, let me look at it. Uh, verse 11. No, not verse 11. Uh, do, 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 do. Am I in the wrong chapter? I think it's chapter 11 and verse 9. That's what I want. Chapter 11, verse 9. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11 and verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, uh -huh. in thy youth. Come on. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. Mm -hmm. And walk in the ways of thy heart uh -huh. and in the sight of of thy eye. So what is he saying? What is Solomon saying right here? This is, he says, rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the day of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. Meaning what? That's that youthful lust. You're doing whatever you see fit, whatever makes you feel good, whatever brings you pleasure. You're going to do whatever it is that makes you feel good. But watch this. Come on. But know thou therefore all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Just know, even after you done done all of that, God go remember those days when you chose your youthful lust outside of him. And he's going to bring all those actions into judgment. And that could be whatever your life situation is. Afterwards, you made those decisions, and now you done matured out of that. You're not even in that phase no more. And now you're like, dang, now you got to clean up all the mistakes that you done made in your life. You got to clean up all of that, all your bad credit, all, I got felonies and all, uh, maybe you got a disease or something you caught because you was whoring yourself out. Whatever the case may be, maybe you, you're a little bit slower now because you abuse drugs. Whatever the case may be, all of those things are going to be coming to judgment because guess what? All of those decisions, you could have avoided that because you was in your youthful lust and you wanted to do whatever it was that you wanted to do. Now you got these end results that is undesirable. Read on. Verse 10, therefore remove sorrow from thy heart uh -huh. and put away evil from thy flesh. It's better to just remove that sorrow from your heart and to put away the evil now while you're in your youth. Come on. For childhood and youth 
our vanity. You see that? Or youthful lust is lies. It's vanity. It profits you nothing. It's bull crap. People be like, oh, I want to I wanna live my young days. I wanna, I'm hot girl summer or whatever the case is. Oh, I'm too young for that. I ain't ready for that. That's for you older people. Or the older people like, man, I'm too old for that. No, remove that sorrow and that evil from your flesh now because youth, what it say, youth, it says childhood <laughs> and youth are vanity. It's vanity. It's only temporary. And what you're going to do is you're going to make the wrong decisions. You won't be able to discern time and judgment. You're going to make a wrong decision. And you're going to ruin your life. And God is going to judge you at the end on top of that. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.